Rachel <laughs> Paris. How are you doing, Rachel? I'm great. Thanks for having me again. You are more than welcome. Poise. UK tour begins Saturday, April 20th in Bristol until Sunday, the 20th of October in Brighton. It's long. Hello. Yeah. Biggest tour yet. Biggest tour for me that I've ever had. Come on. So um, it's the um, the ass end of April. It's the whole of May, the whole of June. Taking July off, very wise. Yeah. Okay. Family holiday. I Absolutely. won't say where. Why the heck not? Uh, there's no point in earning it unless you're going to spend it. September yeah. uh, and October. Wow, wow, wow. And it's music and comedy. It's stand up and sit down. Yeah. Speak to that if you don't mind, Rachel. I'd love to. Uh, so, yeah, like before I did the MASH report or anything on TV, I've been doing musical comedy since I started comedy and I've been doing music long before I did comedy. So musical comedy is like my heart. It's where my home is. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really doing loads of songs in the style of like Victoria Wood or Tim Minchin, that kind of thing on this tour. And of course there's stand-up, there is plenty of stand-up, there's plenty of satire, but yeah, come expecting songs and singing along. So a mate of mine uh, is on tour at the moment, Rob Brydon, and he's oh, doing a yeah. lot of this, you're right? And people have been to see him, um, uh, a guy I'm working with at the moment, he just emailed me yesterday, said, I went to see Rob Brydon last night. I wasn't, I didn't really want to go. I didn't mind going, not mind Rob Brydon, but my wife wanted to go and see him. She said, he was absolutely brilliant, absolutely hilarious. But the crafting of, of music, musical comedy and music and comedy within the show mm -hmm. is, is something else. I mean, comedy melts my brain anyway. Um, I've always wanted to be able to play a musical instrument. You know, I'll jump on a mic until somebody takes it off me to sing <laughs> or shout. Um, but to be able to do the two, um, you started with the piano yeah when you were how old six six okay um did your mom and dad have to force you to do that or did you do were you attracted to it or no i was Eva, i was obviously tiny but i i loved it like i'd reach up and sort of you know plinky plonk on the keys right. and uh and my granddad played by ear you know the old yeah, yeah. tunes Which is and so everything annoying. We hear that a lot, <laughs> yeah two things that annoy me about the piano one is children mums and dads who have kids who want to learn it because we all want our kids to be able to play the piano don't we <laughs> and then other granddads and grandmas who can play by ear <laughs> it's like people you know some blokes you always say oh they had trials for crystal palace it's always crystal palace <laughs> and it's always granddads and grandmas who can play by ear yeah always uh so i had that and then my mum said do you want to have lessons with the local teacher yeah. and i was like yeah sure and i yeah i just sort of loved it straight away i went off it when I failed my grade five, right. <laughs> nearly gave it up. But then I picked it up again and then it became my whole life, really. So being funny via music, is it easy to be funny first, you know, as a stand-up doing comedy? And then does it feed into music or does it just come naturally? I think, well, music definitely comes more naturally than comedy does, I think, for me. But, yeah, I, th I think combining the two just made sense i wouldn't have got into comedy without the songs put it that way is that because of the confidence the songs gives you yeah because you're funny i mean you, you're funny wise you would have done it because you've got funny bones but i would it's the you're right it's the confidence i just would never have thought of like doing stand-up or being just funny on stage just from talking i'd right. have been like who would want to hear me do that but songs i was like no i can write a song though and so and i the songs that i was writing even before i was in the comedy arena they were just sort of naturally quite funny songs yeah, yeah. So that was that was my way in. And Victoria would would she be a hero? Hundred percent. Yeah, she's the best. She, oh, she was the best. She was she? amazing. I grew up watching her and all the specials. And I love my favourite thing about Victoria Wood was that she didn't just do musical comedy. She did character. She did stand up. Yeah. She wrote sitcoms. She was an actor. She wrote serious dramas. You know, she was an actress yeah, yeah. as well. Like she just did a bit of everything and people let her do that they didn't go you've got to be one thing it's sort of what you're doing now <laughs> so I'm just copying her. no no I didn't mean that I didn't. <laughs> but yeah but I mean what a wonderful thing to emulate what your hero did yeah yeah well I just think I do think she paved the way with that of just doing loads of different things and being people laughing at her for it in a good way so without getting too nerdy i am fascinated by the craft of what we do yeah. for, for a living what anybody in our world does you know not that i do what you do but i'm a big fan of anybody that does anything on stage or in front of a microphone or in front of a camera or you know on the street i love yeah, it yeah. all in yeah. circus tent bring it on you <laughs> yeah. know if there's an audience somewhere then I'm I'm like who's doing what? How are they doing it? How much is it is it, is it landing well? And show me how to do trapeze. Show me how to exactly. <laughs> and so when you're when you're writing a musical, when you're when you're sitting down at the piano and you're yeah. doing your thing and you're crafting a an hour of musical comedy. Yeah. And you're crafting an hour of stand up. Yeah. What are the similarities? What are the differences? There are some things that only work in song form. Right. Um, so. 
I'm thinking I've got a song about uh, going to the gym, for example. <laughs> See, already which, funny. <laughs> which already, and it's about how you want to tell everyone once you've been to the gym. And so that has the word I've been to the gym in it about 27 times in the song. Love it. So that only really works as a song. And I made it into a sort of Disney type song. Um and then there's other bits of like stand up where I've got a bit about like compromise in marriage and how compromise is always harder for one person in the marriage than it is for the other. And in our marriage, compromise will always be harder for me because I'm the one who's right. And that own, that wouldn't work as a song. It would You have to explain it like in the stand up. So it. It naturally falls one or the other. It does in your. We talked to in Angela Hartley brain. just now about risotto. Yeah. And, she, and we're trying to say, Angela, how do you cook risotto? We all try and cook it. And as Claudia Winkleman says on her, the new episode of their podcast, Dish, uh, Claudia says, well, Angela, Angela, when I try and cook risotto, it's both undercooked and overcooked at the same time. <laughs> and then Angela starts talking, in, and we let go to Charlie Brown mode. And all we hear is wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and it makes total sense to Angela. And what you just said there makes sense to you, but it still doesn't still make doesn't, sense it to didn't me. didn't help you at all but because you'll, <laughs> can you just smell the flavor is it go left or right yeah 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 and it's all right what are the similarities the similarities are just finding the joke right. find, finding that little turning point that sort of skewed view that makes it funny yeah, yeah. you know you can't just have a song that is just i'm going to write a song about rice you know you've got to find what's funny about rice what? and that's true of stand-up <laughs> or song funny about yeah. rice? <laughs> nothing when you try and cook it that's there's for sure definitely something funny i'm gonna set that as a challenge for my new show now there's something funny about rice there's is something there anything funny about funny rice, about rice? Yeah, yeah there's yeah. nothing funny about rice there's got to be rice do one <laughs> do you start with uh, on the, in the new show do you start with musical do you start with stand-up you mean in the writing process or on the, on the show itself? Song. song, song for that confidence. Yeah. Actually, yeah, uh, I just need that. Some people like come on and like really own the stage with their whole persona, and the way that I can own the stage is the piano and singing. So do you walk to the piano like a concert pianist? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. How does that walk feel? It's good. Do you know what? Um, my husband, Marcus, is Marcus Brigstock, by the way, everyone. If you don't yeah. know, he is really useful. We talk to each other about our craft if you like yeah, yeah. Um, and one thing the advice that we give to each other we don't give each other too much advice because that would cause rouse but some advice he gives me is you have to remember when you watch other comedians how much joy musical comedy brings people and that people are actually excited for you to do that bit of the show yes. so rather than sort of shuffling over to the piano and sort of talking over it and going oh sorry I've got to just make my way over here yes. he said really own it like walk slowly and with purpose and like People aren't dreading it. Yeah. <laughs> They're willing to wait for you yeah. to get there. I, I suppose like it's almost like a, a gangplank, isn't it? Or a cakewalk. Yeah. Or a rope bridge yeah. from the wings to the piano stool. Yeah. <gasps> usually, if you've got a fair audience, usually with applause over yeah. it, you know, hopefully won't be in silence. Oh, my. And how many songs would you kick off with? Would you do a couple? To get a bit uh, of... No, just do one. Just do one and then get into it. Because you want to get into greeting the audience, yeah. talking about where we are. What's the, what's the first song you kick off with? What's it about? Uh... That's going to be a song called What Do Women Want? It's going to be, or it is? It is. is well, it... I'm not... Yeah, obviously, I've got a month till the tour starts, so I'm still shuffling bits around. But my plan is to start off with, yeah, this song, What Do Women Want, which is got, it's got a sing-along element to it. Come on. From my music teacher days. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, I get the audience, split them in two. It's quite a hard sing-along as well. They have to concentrate. Straight away you say we're going to... So you're in, aren't you? Because you're, you're, I mean, come on, to have yeah. this in your toolbox. Yeah. You know, to be able to to sit down at the piano, songs are good anyway, you're gorgeous, you're a great singer, you're a great piano player, you, you're, you're very comfortable at it, and the more comfortable the person is on stage, the more comfortable the audience is, yeah. and the more comfortable you are, the more punk you can be, and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And then you divide the audience into two, you know, who doesn't want to go to this gig? They Can I just tell you, they love it. Of course I they honestly do. think more than any other thing, the sing-along element of the musical comedy that I do, where oh you gosh. push them further than they think they can go yeah. in terms of overlapping melodies and everything and doing harmonies. Yeah. I, a lot of the audience don't know that they can do that. And it's that thing you get from being in a choir and singing together and forming something that sounds awesome together mm. before you've even started they've got all the endorphins and everything you are a trickster because um, <laughs> you're tuning your audience up aren't you yeah you're tuning them in to each other and so you're all on the same vibe anyway yeah and wow i mean I, 
one could never say about anything in life, you know, how could this possibly go wrong, you know, or what could possibly go wrong? But you're pretty much loading the bases there. Yeah. If that's how it starts, how the heck does it end? Well, I like to put in every show a bit of a emotional song in there, okay. as you would expect from me. It's not like, so I've actually got, I haven't finished writing it yet. I started writing it this week and it's a song about turning 40. A lot of the tour is about turning 40 and looking at where my life is now. Yeah. Um, and so it's a song about turning 40. It's sort of a song about womanhood and motherhood. Um, and I don't know if that will be the actual end of the show because you want to end on a big upbeat one, but that's going to be quite near the end as well. A bit of emotional heartstrings. What are the headlines of the subjects in the show? About getting older, right. about finding myself with a lot of... Um, more <laughs> in a traditional situation that I never thought I would be. To give you an idea, a few years ago I did a show like not even that many years ago called Best Laid Plans that was all about me not having the trappings of that traditional life of like Which a woman in her what, 30s. The house, the car, the kids, the husband, uh, the mortgage, the all of that, yeah. the pet. And I, would, I drew it on a chalkboard in the show and at the end, in a really moment of big empowerment, I crossed it out <laughs> and I sang a song called I don't need the trappings of that certain kind of life and it was very empowering. And now I've got all those things. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the baby and the husband and the mortgage. It's not about the trappings, it's about the trap. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Because the word trappings has the word trap in it, I suppose. <laughs> but it's weird, isn't it? Because it's like, that's, we're human beings. There is an inevitability about any end game we find ourselves in. And there are many different end games. You know, some people are dictators. You know, some people are uh, all the worst things in the world. And then some people are the best things that you could be as a human being. But there is an inevitability about. We've sort of, all the options have been experienced thus far. Yeah. And we're going to end up with something that's happened before, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. You, know? you don't know where you're going to end up and you don't know what version of it is going to be. Like, and some of the bits that you didn't expect or plan are the best bits. Of course they are. For as example, long as you surrender to them. Yeah, exactly. For like, example. For example, my stepkids, yeah. one of whom is here today, yeah. Emily's in the control Hi, Emily, room. Emily, gap year. Boom. <laughs> Big up the gap year. Yeah. Um, you know, I, that's not something you predict what kind of family that you're going to be yeah, in a blended family but it turns out to be the best thing ever yeah best thing ever um other headlines from the show other song subjects please oh uh i am doing a rip-off of candle in the wind but it's about liz truss right. um, <laughs> wow <laughs> i probably Already shouldn't funny. say that because i have not got the rights to do uh, it won't be much like i don't it won't think be much elton's like gonna I'm... come after you for satirizing <laughs> liz truss i just I don't know, can't say for sure. <laughs> know him a bit, know where he lives. He's been to me, sent me, he sends me a Christmas card every year. With Does David, he? Him and David Furniture. Oh, I bet he's got really lavish Christmas cards. No, it's always of their sons. Oh, really? And it's always beautiful. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's it's so nice. Um, right, okay. So okay, can, I've got... What, um, what, can we get, have the title of that or not? Iceberg in the Wind. Iceberg in the Wind. Because of the iceberg lettuce um, yeah. during her tenure. Um, I've got a James Bond song. Nice. Uh, that I've written about Bond girls, but it's in the style of, you know, that Beautiful. very classical James Bond yeah. type song. Oh, what have I, I've got one called Easter in Dover, which is about... Oh, really um, funny? Mm. <laughs> just funny. That's just just funny. funny. Just Easter in Dover. Who, does, who doesn't want to spend Easter in Dover? Mm. Lots of funny things are going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I've got a song that actually, again, I just wrote this week. Some of these songs I've been doing for months and they're sort of really ready to go, but it's nice to have it fresh. And I just wrote one this week called I Don't Know How to Greet You which is about doing the greeting wrong when you go to put your hand yeah, out yeah, and someone yeah. goes for a hug Especially and now. they go for two kisses and you go for one and yeah. you end up kissing someone on the and chin. And there's a side hug, kissing on the chin. Yeah. Do you do the fist bump? Fist bump and then you go for the handshake and you end up doing rock, paper, oh, scissors. It's, it's awful. 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 That is an awful. awful moment. Yeah, so I've got a song about that. That is awful. Ta um, Vassos, has, uh, you have a, a greeting paranoia, don't you? Do you remember the corridor thing? Oh, yes. Yeah. So you when, can throw this in if you like. Yeah, I'd like to. When you're, when you're walking down the corridor, let's say the corridor here on the 17th floor, yeah. and you see someone you recognise a, a, a bit. I'm already, but you I'm go already anxious about a this. A bit too early yeah. with the, 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 sort of the, the nod and the high and the, and the eye contact. But then you've got quite a lot of corridor between you. Do you keep And nodding? you don't know what, what do you well, do with that? Your, you've played your ace card. <laughs> yeah. When, when you nod hello yeah. too early. Yeah. And then you have to, like, you've got a choice of you keep nodding or do you just ignore them? Yeah. For the rest of the for walk. For the rest of the walk, which yeah. is a or long Or do you tap walk. them on the shoulder as they're passing you with a bit of a shove? Mm. Like, good to see you. <laughs> Please go that way. Yes. What about if you do an early nod and then a last minute high five? 
Yeah, well, if you risk a high five, that's very oh. punchy. Yeah. That's like lancing back in <laughs> yeah, medieval times. Yeah, isn't it? Because if they've gone, Jeez. they've gone. Yeah. And then you're just hanging. Uh, you're just walking by. That will, that will stay with you all day. Yeah. yeah. Lancing is just high-fiving with the deadly weapon yeah. in your hand on horseback. Yes. That's crazy, that sport, by the way. Yeah. Riding's hard enough anyway. Mm. And lances, I've held a lance. Have you held one? No, but I've They're seen so Why have you held one? Because you have been show business. <laughs> There's not many people who can be like, I've been jousting, sure. We had the best props guy on our show called Stephen. He's sadly no longer with us. And um, he became an executive producer. And he could get us anything. He got us stuff. He used to get us things. And I said, we didn't order that. He said, no, but you'll need it. <laughs> and Because uh, he was he was getting us things that he, would get, that he knew would give us ideas. And I said to him one day, I said, um, uh, could you get us a tank? He said, what colour? <laughs> I said, excuse me? He went, well, wow. they do in more colours. What well, a guy. Different shades of green? He went, no, they do pink, purple. I can get what? I said, well, I just want a green one. He went, okay, just in case. I just, you know, what colour? <laughs> what colour? What colour? That's Boom. the best response. When you're doing your stand-up in between your singing, yeah. comedy, do you get up and stand up? And yeah, do you yeah. Go, so there are two microphones? Yeah, or, right. yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Divided between the two. And then I've got, I'm creating backing tracks for one of the songs as well so that there's also a sort of stadium atmosphere. Kind Love of thing. it. And um, if the stand-up's going particularly well, yeah. would you stay a bit longer at the mic? Yeah. That's fun, isn't it? When you've yeah, got yeah. The, that... that to and fro to go to yeah if songs are going well would you do another song yeah maybe but i there's more a, the stand-up it's it's a story that you know there is a bit of a storyline a bit of a narrative to it so i wouldn't want to pull too much around that and when can you remember when you when you received your you were on the the right end of your first ever big laugh can you remember that what like first comedy gig kind of situation yeah not not at school yeah. not in the classroom not in the playground proper gig First time you a proper big laugh, you think, oh, that's what that I've heard. That's what it might sound like. Yeah, I can. I can. Yeah. Can you tell I us? remember my first gig really clearly. Yeah. So I'd like... First gig. First gig. First gig. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, no. Because <laughs> no, you don't know, do you? It could go either way. Yeah. 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 The first gig. And I honestly think if the first gig hadn't gone very well, I probably wouldn't have carried on doing... Co I think so much hinges on the first gig, if, whether you... All right. I'll tell time. you what. Put a pin in that bit of it. Yeah. Tell us about the day. That day, yeah. how it started, how you're feeling, <laughs> how you got there. What Tell us the whole story, because I think it's fascinating. Gig. Well, I had tricked my way into that first gig. I had never done a comedy gig before, and I knew that I needed to get my way in. And I told a lady that I met in a pub who said she ran a comedy gig that I was a comedian, which was a lie. <laughs> and she said, well, then you can have 20 minutes at my gig. 20 yeah, 20 minutes. <laughs> um, and... Uh, luckily, it wasn't a traditional, it was quite a weird, it was in Cable Street right. and it was um, a collective of like, some were comedians, some were artists, some nice. were po poets, Good. you know, a bit of everything. But yeah. So a very open-minded audience. Very open-minded, very artsy. Yeah. So I was doing, there was a little piano on the stage. Um, I installed my boyfriend at the time and some friends. So I did have some support in the audience. Right. Um, and it was it was such a weird gig. There was an artist painting the gig in the corner. I love that. That's how artsy this That's gig was. That's cool, man. Such a strange Just bring gig. Bring that back. Yeah, lovely. Paint yeah. the gig. Um, so yeah, I did a, a song called "My Feelings for You Are Tepid," um, <laughs> <laughs> which I still do at gigs. Um, I did, what which was with tepid, by the way. Uh, that actually, it was just that repeated three times, but then it went. But tepid is better than hate. Um, so that was a sweeping <laughs> love song called "My Feelings for You Tepid," which was a sing along as well. I learned that early on, right. um, and I did a song which I'll never. I didn't do again, but it got laughs. That was like, um, it might as well be spring. Do you know that beautiful old song from the fifties? It's like a classic jazz song, but I changed the words to be. Uh, about a funny, uh, funny words about a man, um, right. and it it worked. It was like my first few goes, I suppose, at doing a How did it feel? funny song. It felt really good. Like it, it all got laughs, and I did some poems as well and a bit of stand up. That's pretty strong for a first ever appearance, isn't it? A yeah. twenty minutes. B the songs. Uh, see, it all got laughs. That re I, mean, I, I don't know anybody else who's ever achieved that. I don't think it all got laughs, but it definitely got enough laughs for me to think I'm in the right direction with this. More than any... Because by that point, I'd been a musician. I'd tried to do acting, but got no work. Um, I tried, like, cabaret and even burlesque. And, like, it, none of that had really worked. And even from the first gig, I was like, no, this suits me. This works, actually. Right. So that was good. And after the gig when you went home that night... Yeah. 
was it like was it almost like a birth was it like ah oh, this this is who I am this yeah is- it, there was a feeling of like I definitely want to do that more and that feels like it said yes to me right. in a way that nothing else really had okay so that's great the biggest tipping point thus far in your career Ooh. oh or one of them I'm, I'm sure there have been a few I mean there was the mash report really when it took not the beginning of the mash report but there was a moment at the start of the second bit um, of series one where my role changed yeah. and suddenly people were paying attention um, and I was given just a lot of opportunities that I wasn't given before like Live at the Apollo Mock the Week all of that happened within a few weeks so that was January, February 2018 was the absolute tipping point really. and again victoria wood used to be on that's life and she was very yes. satirical at the end of that's life so it was either her or richard stilgo just oh. being very clever with the week's news yeah, yeah um and that music you know if you have if you have the enough skill uh, and you have the ear for it and you have the eye yeah. for what's going on that's a beautiful fit isn't it it so is um richard stilgo is amazing as well have you heard joe stilgo yeah we've had him on the show oh i love him yeah. he's amazing i go to see him because <laughs> i'm just like you're incredible <laughs> really what 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 because you do what he does so what does he do no, that, he that impresses better. you <laughs> What he is his musicianship, right. just his his voice, his piano skills, the way he's able to just seamlessly play anything, and yeah, j- just his musicianship to me is Tim inspiring. Tim Minchin's been on the show a lot. Yeah, I love him. Of course, of course, who doesn't love yeah. Tim? Um, other women doing what you do now, because Victoria was your hero. Yeah. So other women that are doing some other. Yeah, there's uh, Tamar Broadbent. Is do- she's a fantastic piano comedian. There's um. Pip Evans is a great musical comedian and improviser as well. Do you have a gig together? Yes, yeah. There's there's quite a lot of promoters who are like, we can't have you and Pip Evans because you're the same, uh, which isn't true. But yes, we do, we do. And we do the Comedy Store Players together as well. Have so. you ever done duets with fellow lady musical comedians, you know, on the same I'm just trying to think piano. if I have, Because that'd actually. be fun, wouldn't it? No, I haven't, but I would love to. That'd be so much fun. I'd love to. To yeah. get three sort of musical comedians together in a comedic trio yeah so i mean it's all good anyway who cares but it's all good yeah um right hopes and dreams for the tour what do you think uh that i go and visit loads of stately homes while i'm on tour (laughs) this is all the fun (laughs) that's my chance to visit stately homes my husband's not a big fan so while i'm away i'm just gonna make the most of being a tourist basically um i hope that the show uh starts off well and gets even better as we go through and I hope that my son remembers who I am at the end of it. Oh, <laughs> and Mother's Day on Sunday. Mother's Day on Sunday. Good for you. How's Marcus doing? Yeah, he's great. What's Thanks. What's going on yeah. with Marcus? He's on tour with um, I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue and is just gigging, busy as usual. Good for you. Good for you. So life is good. Life is good. Life Thank is you. sweet. We're lucky, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. We're so lucky. Yeah. Uh, Poise UK Tour starring Rachel Paris, the one and only Rachel Paris. You don't need another one. Uh, <laughs> being Saturday, April 20th in Bristol until Sunday, the 20th of October in Brighton. Nice, nice place to finish, Brighton. Is it, is it important to, to look forward to a particular place at the end of a tour? Was Brighton yeah. on purpose? It wasn't on purpose, but it's fallen really well because Brighton feels like a second home, really, in right. terms of I've been gigging in Brighton since I first started. Yeah, yeah. My brother's down there, like it feels just when, like... I, when I just, I mean, we watched Brighton last night, didn't we, on the telly, because they had a tea time uh, European um, uh, last 16 Europa League clash. Didn't go that well for them. They played really well, I just let four silly girls in. <laughs> but uh, when I even hear the word Brighton, it just makes me feel seaside. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, smell the air, can't so you? So nice. Um, oh, can I mention the podcast? Do what you want, yeah. Oh, thanks. Me and Marcus, my husband, Marcus yeah. Briggs, start, uh, starting a podcast. Uh, it's starting in April. Why don't you come on and talk about it, both of you? Oh, I'd love that. Can we? Yeah, of course. Oh, well, thanks. do the deal now. Oh, all right. It's a deal. Yeah. So what's it going to be called? It's called How Was It For You? How Was It For You? And it's us reviewing things in our life. Right. Like, out of ten. Uh, but it's a way of just <laughs> Out of chatting. ten is good. Right. Not like, we wouldn't review, like, a film or a piece of theatre. We're reviewing, like, what was it like to watch that TV with... Uh, uh, three different generations who've never seen it before. Lovely. What was it like to have Billy's incredibly noisy tractor tour that wouldn't turn off for eight hours? Yeah, yeah. So we're reviewing just silly, ridiculous stuff in our life. I think it's great. I think it's great. Um, you're going to do that every week? Every week, yeah. Forever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Until they stop us. It's so cool. Uh, all right, listen, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much for having uh, me. You nearly came in a couple of weeks ago. I'm so glad you came in today. Yeah. Rachel Paris, Poise Tour. For tickets, rachelontour.com. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. 